Okay, first listen to this. And look at this. There's some really exciting stuff going on right now with SpaceX's Starship and NASA's SLS rocket. Costly and years late, NASA's SLS moon rocket rolls to the launch pad for the first time. Ouch, that's kind of a headline that stings, but I guess they're not wrong. I'm sure that you guys tuned in, so I just wanted to recap some of the highlights. Obviously, this is big news for NASA as they rolled out the SLS rocket to the launch pad for the first time, and around 10,000 people actually gathered to see this happen in person. This, of course, is like an 11-hour journey to get from one spot to the other because the thing has to go so dang slowly, so I would highly doubt everyone stayed, but it was really cool to hear remarks, especially from the NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Here's some of what he had to say. There's no doubt that we are in a golden era of human space exploration, discovery, and ingenuity in space. And it all begins with Artemis One. The Space Launch System is the only rocket capable of sending humans into deep space. It's the most powerful rocket in the world. And during liftoff, it will produce 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, propelling the Orion spacecraft about 240,000 miles to the moon. And Orion will venture farther than any spacecraft built for humans that has ever flown humans. It will stay in space longer than any spacecraft designed for astronauts that has ever done without docking to a space station. And after a three week journey of over a million miles, Orion will come home faster and hotter than any vehicle has before. And it wouldn't be possible without all of you here today. We are joined by thousands of members of the NASA family it's because of you that we are here today. The SLS rocket stands at 322 feet tall. It's actually taller than Our Lady Liberty. On top sits the Orion spacecraft. That, of course, is going to transport as many as four astronauts to the moon. Take a look at this graphic from NASA. You can see the Space Launch System Block 1 rocket, 322 feet high. As you can see, the Launch Abort Escape rocket sits on top, the Orion spacecraft service module underneath that, and then the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Upper stage, the core stage, the solid fuel boosters, and the mobile launcher. And look at, look at those little humans for scale. Holy moly. This is so exciting to me. I know that a lot of you guys might have been alive during the Apollo era. Maybe you were really, really young, but this is completely brand new to me. And so I'm so excited that we are going back to the moon. I can't wait to see this process unfold. And this is of course the first time the public has been able to see this monster rocket with their own eyes. Of course, the SLS program has experienced some delays and faced harsh criticism for those delays and other issues. And of course, what will be a big issue is that price tag. Holy moly. Last week, NASA's Inspector General Paul Martin told Congress the price tag that he had calculated for the first three flights of SLS. Apparently, they're going to be around $4.1 billion each. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like. What? And he does acknowledge that this will be unsustainable, but wow, that's no comment. It's crazy to me to think that the last time we were on the lunar surface was in 1972. We are expecting the first launch of SLS to happen sometime this year, but so many tests need to be done before then. NASA is of course beginning all of these tests by rolling the rocket with the Orion crew capsule perched on top to the launch pad. Following this rollout over the days and weeks to come, NASA will connect the rocket to the ground systems and eventually fully fuel it. Then NASA will simulate a countdown. Of course, that's our wet dress rehearsal. If it all goes well, then SLS will be rolled back to the assembly building. That's where NASA will run more tests to make sure everything is operating correctly before attempting a launch. The first flight of Artemis 1 could come as early as May or June. 
and that one is intended to send the Orion capsule without any astronauts aboard into orbit around the moon before coming home and splashing down in the ocean. Then after that, they would hope to do another flight by 2024 that would send astronauts into orbit. And then they hope by 2025 to actually get astronauts back on the moon. But considering all of the delays they've already experienced, I wanna know from you guys, do you think that those timelines are actually realistic? Comment below what you think. Also, don't only look at this video, listen to it. Here you can see SpaceX testing a fully stacked Starship. They quickly stacked Ship 20 and Booster 4 and gave us this glorious video. Starship definitely sounds like it is coming to life, like it's breathing. It's just crazy. I've listened to this so many times. According to Tesla Roddy, SpaceX appears to have put Starship through a fairly limited cryogenic proof. This is a test where flammable propellant is replaced with a similarly cold cryogenic fluid that's similar enough to subject a rocket to similar thermal and mechanical stresses. For Ship 20 and Booster 4's combined debut, Super Heavy was filled maybe 10 to 20% and Starship only around 25 to 50% of the way with either liquid nitrogen or a combination of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. Also, according to this Tesla Roddy article, it's difficult to tell, but they think it's unlikely that any methane was actually used in this test. And according to this tweet from Zach Golden, he says these are 10 Starship and Super Heavy RCS vents all at the same time. I also have been waiting to get this in the mail, so let's open it together. You guys know what it is. I'm so excited to show you. So I met this artist, Jade, last time I was at Starbase and she just does incredible uh, sketches and drawings of SpaceX Starship related things. So let's show you some of these cool prints. She says, Ellie, it was so wonderful to meet you out at Starbase. Hope our paths cross again someday, maybe for a launch. I don't think it's a maybe, I think it's a guarantee. <laughs> Oh wow, these are so cool. Oh my goodness. Wow, yeah. So these are really cool. I told her, uh, send some to me because I really wanted to show you guys. So these are just some examples. This is uh, actually Tesla production and this is a Starship booster. Starship booster four. Take a look, take a look. Yeah, so if you guys are interested, wow, Jade, thank you so much. This is so cool. These are beautiful. I'm adding to the collection, you guys. This is really exciting. I will link Jade's information in the description. Jade, thank you so much for sending me those. They are going to be on my bookcase here shortly and I just, I love them. So I wanna know what you guys think about both of these really exciting moments, the rollout and the crazy monster noises that we heard from Starship. What are you excited about? I love reading your comments, so please comment below. Also, maybe leave me a comment if you plan on going to TeslaCon. That is a week long of activities in Austin, Texas, centered around the, of course, GigaFest, which is happening April 7th. That is to celebrate the grand opening of Giga Texas. I'm gonna try to get into that, but I know for sure I'll be at TeslaCon. In fact, I was invited to be sort of like a host slash guest speaker. I'm pretty sure I'll be moderating a panel of speakers and we're gonna talk obviously about Tesla, but also about SpaceX, because if you're interested in Tesla, chances are you're probably interested in SpaceX. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you soon.